Okay, we're going to start this off with a bang. We're going to begin by looking at a computer system. Now, I know what you're thinking. We've got a great looking computer right here, and we're certainly going to look at that, but not right off. I want to start by looking at a classic computer system. This is the Nintendo Entertainment System from the 1980s. Just like a modern computer, it uses software, it has a CPU, it uses memory chips. So we're going to take a look at this device to see exactly how it worked all the way back then. Now the good news is I've already prepped this, taken out all of the screws so that we can take it apart easily. Like any other computer, you want to disconnect any peripheral devices before you actually begin taking it apart. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the gun and the controller. I want to make sure there's no software in it. Let's see what we've got here. Ah, looks like we've got Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. So got to get that out of there. And now we're going to go ahead and remove this top portion. Again, with the screws already removed, we can begin to see the inside of this case. So I'll move this control out of the way so you can see it. Now, I've already taken the screws out inside as well, which allow us to get fully into the case. And you have to take these old computers apart very carefully because they're assembled in a manner that really wasn't intended to be taken apart. So we're going to gently slide this out. This was the receiver slot that you would put the software module in or the game card. And then here we have our actual motherboard inside of this Nintendo Entertainment System. But it's designed so we're looking at the back side of it. So what we're going to do is lift this out, flip it over, and now when we take a look at this side, you can actually see there's a receiver slot here for an expansion card. And then we pull this cover off, we get to see all of the glory. And here we actually have our CPU. This is our CPU. We have memory chips on it as well. And believe it or not, this device used a 6502 processor, was the kind of processor, but it was in the core of the chip. And it actually also had some extra components on die in order to allow this Nintendo Entertainment System to work. So it was a really cool system for its time. Ran software just like modern computers run software, only it was focused on running gaming software and just that kind of gaming software. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and set this to the side so we can take a look at another computer. Now this time, we're going to be looking at a modern computer, quite a powerhouse by today's standards. This computer is your standard mid-tower case, and so it has a standard size case. You can get taller cases, the high tower or full-size tower case. You can also find shorter cases as well that are a little bit smaller than this. And then you have your desktop computer cases, too, that sit down flat on the desktop. This one in particular has a nice see-through side so you can see into the components of the computer. It also has venting on the top of the system, as we can see the perforated holes on the top here, as well as on the back of the system. So it has a lot of ventilation. Now, the reason is that this is designed to be a gaming-type case. So there's an expectation that there's going to be a high-power processor in here and a high-power GPU, graphics processing unit. And we'll take a look at those when we get on the inside. But first of all, I want to show you some of the back components on this, so I'm going to lay it down, and let's take a closer look at this device. 